Hey, church family, hope you're having a great day. My name's Sam. I'm one of the pastors here on staff. I just wanted to take a minute and share an encouraging word with you. You know, as I look back over my life, uh, there have been times in my life where I've been what you would consider a runner. Notice I said times, like sometimes I'm all in, I'm all about it, I'm very consistent, I'm pushing through, I've even run in some races, and then there's been other times where it's like the treadmill's folded in the corner and I don't even know if it works anymore. And as I think through that, you know what I notice is that the times I've been consistent and I've been able to keep in, I've had somebody with me. Uh, somebody to push me, somebody to hold me accountable, somebody that's kind of been my running buddy. Maybe it's been a friend or somebody I'm in a class with or my wife or, or just somebody that's helped me be accountable. And you know, the same thing is true in our faith. Listen to what the book of Hebrews says in chapter three, starting in verse 12, it says this, see to it, brothers and sisters, that none of you has a sinful, unbelieving heart that turns away from the living God, but encourage one another daily as long as it is called today, so that none of you may be hardened by sin's deceitfulness. We've come to share in Christ, if indeed we hold our original conviction firm to the very end. You know what's so interesting about this passage is that it's written actually to believers, to Christians. But in there it says, hey, you who are Christians, you who are followers of Jesus, you need to make sure that you don't have a sinful, unbelieving heart. Now, that's kind of an odd thing because we think, hey, when I become a follower of Jesus, that means I have a believing heart. I believe in him. So how can I, as a follower of Jesus, have a sinful, unbelieving heart? And, I, and if we think about it, it makes sense, right? I mean, there's always these times in our lives where we have a lot of passion. We have a lot of love. And, and our fire for God is growing, uh, glowing brightly and is pushing on. And then there's other seasons where it feels like we're just maybe going through the motions and we're just kind of there. And what he's saying is, hey, you need to make sure and you need to be sure that you're always putting uh, fuel to the fire to keep your faith going so that you don't look up and all of a sudden realize that you've drifted away from God. It's no different than exercise or a diet or anything like that. We always start out so passionate, all in, we're going for it. And it seems like over time, it just kind of starts to die out a little bit. And he's saying, hey, our faith can be the same way. So how do we make sure, what, is, what does the writer of Hebrews say is the most important way we can make sure that our faith is continually uh, building that fire and building that passion and building that love for Christ? Well, look what he says. See to it, brothers and sisters, that none of you has a sinful, unbelieving heart. Now, when he says that, he's talking to the church. And he's saying, hey, you as a church, what we need to be doing is we need to be watching out and seeing to and checking in on and, and following up in all the other Christians and followers of Jesus around us. That it's our role and our responsibility and it's our charge from the New Testament that we would be watching out for other believers to be encouraging them in their faith, to be pushing them forward, to be holding each other accountable, to be building each other up so that we can make sure that nobody within our midst has a sinful, unbelieving heart. He goes on and says, encourage one another daily as long as it's called today, so that none of you may be hardened by sin's deceitfulness. In other words, exactly like if you've got somebody that you work out with, or you got somebody that's encouraging you in your diet, or you got somebody that's a running buddy, like you've got somebody there to push you forward and say, you can do this. We can make it. Hey, stick in this. Hey, you're missing the mark right there. We got to step back in line. Like he's saying, you've got to have somebody beside you to walk through this faith and this relationship with Jesus that pushes you and encourages you in him. So let me give you just a little uh, a charge, a little challenge this week. Sometimes it's easy for us to hear a passage like this and think, yeah, I need somebody encouraging me. I need somebody pushing me. I need somebody holding me accountable. But really what he's telling us is that we need to be the ones that are going out and encouraging one another and charging each other on and pushing each other forward and holding each other accountable. So maybe this is a week. I mean, here we are. This could be a week where you said, hey, I'm going to look for somebody to encourage in my family, in my church family, in, in the family of God. I'm going to look for, for somebody that I can reach out to and see how they're doing. Not just make sure they got enough groceries and all that kind of stuff. That's important. But even deeper than that, check in on someone's soul and see where they are. Hey, how are you doing with the Lord? Are you able to w continue to walk with him and, and have passion for him even in this difficult time? And maybe we could just use this as a moment to see to those around us, to see to our brothers and sisters in Christ, to see to those that have been placed in our midst so that we can make sure that no one around us has a sinful, unbelieving heart, a heart that falls away from God, but instead is pushed on and is pushed further in their faith. Let's pray. Father God, I just thank you so much 
that going through the Christian life and walking with you isn't something that we do alone. It's something that we do in fellowship and in community. And that's what church is really about. It's about the body of of followers of Jesus. It's about the body of Christians coming together to love each other, support each other, and encourage and push each other in our faith as we all seek to love you, to follow you, and to love your son more. And I pray that's exactly what we would do, that we would be looking for ways to encourage, challenge, and hold accountable each other in our faith. And I ask this in your son's name. Amen. Hey, I hope you have a great week. See you tomorrow.